For all of us at IISD, the launch of the SDG Knowledge Hub has been an adventure in bringing vision to fruition. IISD is not new to the knowledge game. We began working in the area of knowledge management in 2008, almost two years between, before the Climate Change Conference of the Parties in Copenhagen. At that time, the UN Secretary General had asked the CEB, which is the Chief Executives Board, the highest level management body in the UN system, to coordinate all of the activities of the UN on climate change. In order to know what they needed to coordinate, we began working closely with the CEB and the High Level Committee on Programming, the HLCP, to develop a content management system to track all international activities of the UN programs and agencies in an online data system that we called Climate Change Policy and Practice a database with stories written by our Earth Negotiations Bulletin team of writers in an ad hoc curator network. From 2008 through 2015, we expanded our knowledge management system to track international activities on biodiversity, chemicals, forests, land, water, small island states, and sustainable development, building separate websites for each of these issues. At the conclusion of the um, negotiations on the SDGs, Michael Gerber from the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation and I sat in the UN Delegates Lounge and we sketched out how we might transform our separate knowledge management sites into one comprehensive site using our IISD team to track the implementation of each of the 17 SDGs, a formidable task. From this vision, Lynn Wagner, who has supervised our IISD knowledge management sites, was given the task of taking the vision and turning it into reality. We're so pleased to have launched the IISD Knowledge Hub last month. So let me introduce our next speaker, Dr. Lynn Wagner. Lynn regularly observes and analyzes multilateral environmental negotiations through her work as a team leader for the Earth Negotiations Bulletin. She began working with IISD 22 years ago in 1994 and is the incoming group director of IISD's new program, the SDG Knowledge Program. For the last eight years, she oversaw the development and daily updating of all of our IISD policy and practice knowledge bases, and she continues this role for the new SDG Knowledge Hub. Lynn received her PhD from the Paul H. Nitsky School of Advanced International Studies, SAIS. Her research interests focus on the relationship between negotiation processes and outcomes, particularly for environmental negotiations. It's a pleasure for me to introduce Dr. Lynn Wagner. Lynn. Hi, thank you so much for that introduction, Kimo, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, as Kimo mentioned, and Damon, th this is a very exciting uh, new project for IISD. Uh, it's bringing together our work uh, over eight years on uh, our suite of policy and practice knowledge bases, and we're also going to be incorporating elements of other parts of ISD, especially our work on measurement and indicators into, into this project, uh, because uh, the SDG agenda, um, the, the third component is, is the indicators and the tracking to be sure that the international community uh, is implementing these goals. Um, I'm going to be uh, walking you through some of the key features of the Knowledge Hub and then doing a, an overview of what the agenda entails and uh, some interesting uh, elements uh, that are going on right now to uh, implement the SDGs based on information that you could find in the SDG Knowledge Hub. Uh, as you see when you first visit the site, uh, you're greeted with this, this wheel that has come to be associated with the SDGs. And you're invited to start exploring uh, the, the goals to, to find information that, uh, about the, what's going on with the SDGs. Our, our designer uh, designed it so that the, the rays do convey extra information. The, the size and the difference of the rays to, uh, 
um, is based on the amount of information that we have in the hub based on each of those goals. So as you visit the site, those uh, extended rays will change size. Uh, we look forward to having them more consistently sized for each of the goals uh, as we go forward. The next, the, um, Um, sorry about that. So, so once you get to the site, uh, you select a goal, uh, and the whichever one you select, the the goal number will appear. Once you click on it, you'll get information about what that goal, the the name is, and also some brief information on what our hub contains regarding it. How many news stories we've written, how many guest articles, how many policy briefs, and how many events. Uh, when you go to the specific goal page, you'll be greeted with a variety of news stories, guest articles, and policy briefs, as well as a review of the targets that are associated with that particular goal. Uh, a really key part of the SDG uh, framework and the, the 2030 agenda for sustainable development that the goals are a part of is that this is a universal agenda. It is meant to be implemented by all countries and uh, and all of the, the goals are meant to be implemented. Uh, so the, the approach to implementation is not meant to follow just a SDG goal by goal process, but to involve cross identification of cross cutting linkages and ways that uh, synergies can be achieved by implementing um, efforts across these goals. So one way that we seek to help the start to identify these synergies and these cross linkages is through our um, our categories and this this filtering system that you see right here. We have about 200 categories that every story is assessed according to. Uh, they fall into these uh, themes of SDGs, uh, issues, global partnership, actors, actions, and regions. The global partnership category is a new uh, new addition to our category list, uh, if you were familiar with our policy. And it is based on SDG 17. So it looks at uh, the means of implementation is a story about capacity building, technology transfer, trade, uh, and, or does it also address systemic issues, uh, data monitoring and accountability, multi-stakeholder partnerships, and policy and institutional coherence. So these are uh, SDG 17, uh, some of the core parts about the implementation of this agenda. Um, the, the category is used not exclusively for stories that specifically relate to SDG 17. So there could be some activities that address finance and trade, uh, but they, the, the organizers of a meeting or of a, uh, the writers of a report with recommendations may not have specifically meant for it to address SDG 17, but it still is addressing these themes. And so by using these categories, we hope that uh, the, the users will be able to find these underlying um, common themes within the stories and uh, identify uh, some cross-cutting um, activities uh, or gain, gain new ideas from what's happening within another uh, issue area to, to bring over to, to the, the issue area that our reader is particularly focused on. Uh, the, our guest, guest articles and policy briefs are a key component of the, the knowledge base. We want to keep the site uh, lively and interesting and bringing, uh, keep bringing in the context of what all the, the developments uh, that we report on a daily basis mean. So how are different stories related? Uh, so 
uh, we'll be reaching out to, to authors. We're always uh, interested in having people reach out to us if they have an idea of a topic uh, for a guest article. Our policy briefs are written by our internal experts um, based on themes that they're seeing as we're writing the stories. Uh, we have a monthly forecast column where we look at what's coming up during uh, each month and we, we uh, write a short summary of what um, some of the key things to look out for in the coming month. The, our events calendar, I think ISD has for a long time maintained one of the most comprehensive sustainable development uh, events calendars around. Uh, we continue to do so. Uh, when you come to the calendar, you can select a day, find um, what's happening uh, around the world uh, related uh, to sustainable development themes. The, the different colors relate to the different SDGs, the, the different colors of the bars. Uh, but on that right hand column, you'll find uh, the, the names of the events and then you can go from there to find more information on contact details, uh, specific location and summary of what's expected at the event. We also sort our information according to actors. Uh, so if you're interested in what the AU is doing, um, all the UN agencies, uh, we have a category for stakeholders, uh, one for partnerships, one for national governments. You can look, uh, use that, that sorting mechanism to find out what's on the hub. And then we also sort our information according to regions uh, to see what's happening in, uh, we have a variety of um, ways that the regions are sliced up um, and some of them are overlapping like Asia and then there's also the Near East group um, which overlaps with Asia and um, Africa. Uh, but just as another way to, to organize the data. The, uh, another way to enter the information is through this SDG uh, tab. The, the goals are presented in another familiar way to those working on the SDGs. Uh, you can click from here to find out the latest information on the SDGs. Uh, and then another uh, interesting element that was built into the system are these uh, small bands at the top of each story. We call them an accordion, uh, but they help to identify how many uh, SDGs a particular story has been categorized as being relevant to. And so uh, this is just a way to show you know, how um, very specific a story is or if it's uh, cross-cutting across several SDGs, uh, but just to, to bring out uh, the, the links to the different SDGs in each story. And then we also send out our information in a daily uh, newsletter. Uh, so we don't just put our uh, material onto the website and hope that you'll remember to come back. We'll send a, a newsletter kind of prompting you to, to let you know that we've just published some new stories on the site, uh, give you some headlines of what's what's new. Uh, so if you want to read more, you'll come back to the site. Um, if you want to sign up, there's a sign up uh, for the newsletter, um, sign up section for the newsletter uh, from the home page. Uh, and so with that introduction to some of the key features, I wanted to go into a short um, summary of some of the key things coming up with the, the SDG agenda, uh, the 2030 agenda. Um, and uh, as, as a way to highlight the information that you'll find in the SDG Knowledge Hub. Uh, so as we all know, and Kimo mentioned, uh, Earth Negotiations Bulletin covered the negotiations of the, the SDGs, the development of them, up until the, their adoption on 25 September 2015. Uh, and as many of you also may know, this negotiation was one of the most open and transparent in UN um, history. And so that openness and transparency is to continue through the whole uh, agenda uh, and implementation period. The, the 
the SDGs were designed to uh, and their uh, targets and especially through the indicators to to increase the transparency of what countries are doing the the information uh, being shared about uh, how these countries are ensuring that no one is left behind uh, and as um, in doing so to increase the, the accountability of our decision makers uh, and so th that really is an underlying principle of why we're doing what we're doing to help increase the transparency and accountability of what um, what decision makers have said they would do and what they're doing in this 15 year um, <laughs> during this 15 year framework of the SDGs. Uh, so, so one of the unresolved uh, issues uh, from when the SDGs were adopted was what the follow-up and review uh, shape would take. And the follow-up and review uh, is under the, the purview of the high-level political forum on sustainable development within the UN. So the first meeting uh, after the adoption of the SDGs took place in 2016. Uh, if you search the site, you'll find many stories about what um, some of the site events that took place during the HLPF, some of the um, information on the voluntary national reviews that were submitted to the HLPF. The first year uh, HLPF, there were 22 uh, voluntary national reviews. Country, 22 countries volunteered to uh, put out their information on what they were doing to implement the SDGs already, uh, what different structures, government structures they had created, uh, how they were approaching the, uh, the prioritization and the, the implementation of this agenda. And very encouraging for next year as well, 24 countries have already said that they want to do a voluntary national review next year. Um, and so, the, and next year's HLPF will also be the first one where they'll, they will examine a number of um, SDGs, the, the implementation of certain SDGs. So next year it'll be SDG 1, and poverty in all its forms everywhere, SDG 2, and hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. SDG 3, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. Um, SDG 5, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. And then SDG 9 on uh, infrastructure, SDG 14 on oceans, life underwater. And then SDG 17, which is on the global partnership, will be discussed at each uh, HLPL. Uh, so another of the um, unfinished business for the, the SDG framework was the identification of indicators. So in September 25, um, on September 25, 2015, the 17 goals and 169 uh, targets were adopted. Uh, but the indicators were going to be developed uh, subsequently through a group called the Interagency and Expert Group on SDG Indicators, uh, which is under the UN Statistical Commission. Uh, and then eventually the, the um, advice and rec recommended set of indicators will go back uh, to the, the UN General Assembly. Um, currently there are approximately 230 indicators in the su suggested set. It hasn't been uh, finalized uh, completely, but it'll be um, somewhere around, uh, somewhere over 200, uh, but 230 is a, an approximate number being used right now. Uh, they're expected to be finalized next year, 2017. Um, and some of the discussions on the, the remaining indicators are based on targets that don't have numerical tar um, numerical um, prompts so that then the the uh, evaluation or the identification of an indicator has to uh, carefully define what was meant by that target uh, and then um, put some time into to defining what what was meant um, to be achieved and how how it's going to be measured uh, we'll be covering the next meeting of the IAEG, which is going to be later this month in Geneva. 
Uh, so IAEG number four will be taking place, uh, progressing this discussion on these remaining indicators. A number, or an, another issue that uh, is of interest, uh, although on the, the surface it may not seem um, as sexy as the, the measurement and the actual implementation, uh, this quad quadrennial comprehensive policy review. So it happens every uh, four years. They're evaluating uh, what, um, what's happening in the UN development system. And the timing of this happens uh, to follow the adoption of the SDGs. So this review period is uh, within the UN um, and they're uh, figuring out how the UN development system should be, um, what its mandate should be with regard to implementing this new framework. Uh, and so we have some people on the ground in New York who have been following meetings there, writing some policy briefs. We have uh, some, some guest articles about suggestions for how, what this QCPR should look like. Uh, but so this is a really important um, decision because it will tell the, the um, UN development system, uh, the, which is um, active, in countries, uh, what their their priorities and how they should be implementing the SDG framework as part of their work. Uh, another thing that you'll find in the hub are uh, is information on national implementation plans. So China recently released their national plan to implement the SDGs, and we have a, a summary of it uh, and some of the the highlights about what it sees itself, um, its role in doing to achieve the, the SDGs and the targets. Um, and as time goes on, we'll have more uh, stories referencing this report and other national reports in relation to uh, various studies that'll come out evaluating indicators that measure these uh, plans, uh, some guest articles and some policy briefs, uh, bringing some context into the, the implementation process within specific countries uh, and highlighting especially some of those first movers and countries that are doing particularly innovative things to, to implement the SDGs. Another way that uh, implementation is being approached uh, is uh, from comes from the UN Convention to Combat Desertifications process to define what a land degradation neutrality target would be. Uh, so the, the UN CCD started uh, um, advocating for a target to, for land degradation neutrality uh, during the Rio Plus 20 negotiations, which concluded in 2012. And they uh, developed a process within the, the convention of scientists and stakeholders to, to start defining what, what that would mean in practice, how you would measure something like this. Uh, so then when this target uh, was included in the SDG framework, it's target 15.3, the UNCCD had already advanced the discussion quite a bit. Uh, and so in uh, the past year, the UNCCD used um, information that it had gained through uh, some pilot studies of um, uh, about 12 uh, countries had done a pilot testing of setting national LDN targets uh, to expand it. So the last, in the last year, 100 and two countries have now established targets for this specific um, uh, SDG target. And uh, based on that experience now, the, the UNCCD is going to uh, have some funding and uh, have um, pilot studies in implementing these targets and uh, you know, sharing the lessons and ha uh, serving as a, uh, a, a discussion body um, to, to discuss you know, specific lessons from this target setting process. Uh, and so it's I mean, the more kind of processes that we can see 
doing this, the more lessons countries are going to learn in setting targets. Uh, and the, the goal is that um, it, it'll spread, you know, once they've gone through one process, there, will, there should be lessons learned and uh, synergies with other targets within the SDG process uh, and that it will, um, and achieving a land degradation neutrality um, target should have implications for the, for the food um, food objectives, uh, for um, gender objectives, for, for many other parts of the SDG agenda. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out with this slide is how when you're on an individual story page, you'll see the author. We have about 15 thematic experts who write uh, sp stories on specific themes. And so when you uh, see a, a thematic expert whose theme uh, seems really interesting, if you click on them, click on their, um, their name, you'll find their whole body of work. And that, that's just one other way that you can use the hub to find, uh, to dr drill down to find information that you're interested in. If you see a story that's of particular interest, I encourage you to go see what uh, other stories that author has written, because it's most likely uh, part of, um, you know, the, the progression of the topic uh, within that organization um, or uh, more generally various actors on a particular theme. Uh, so in this example, Wangu Mwangi is our expert on land, soil, and desertification. So she's been following UNCCD activities, uh, the soil, Global Soil Partnership, and other, other activities re related to land, agriculture, and desertification. And one final story I want to bring up as, as another way to show that uh, implementation is how implementation is being approached on the SDG agenda uh, relates to SDG 14, which is on uh, life underwater, uh, so oceans. So during the SDG negotiations themselves, some countries who are particular supporters of, of this um, this SDG proposed that there be a global conference uh, checking in on how implementation was going. And so this is the one SDG where there is this uh, planned global follow-up conference on SDG 14. And it'll take place uh, next year uh, under the auspices of the um, of the UN General Assembly. It's going to take place in New York, uh, It's but it's sponsored uh, the, the work on it. It'll be co-hosted by the governments of Fiji and Sweden. And this story um, talks about the, the recent uh, appointment of two co-facilitators to oversee the preparatory process of the conference. Uh, so if this is your issue, then you'd want to know which two um, ambassadors uh, within the UN are going to be um, co-leading the, the preparations for this conference uh, to, to be able to engage in that process. Uh, and there's also an expected um, outcome from this conference. It's going to be called, right now. It's being called a call for action. Uh, but so, just um, I guess the stories that we're putting in here try to alert our readers to to the ongoing preparations leading up to a conference, so that if it is an in interest, if it is an SDG uh, of your organization, so you can see where the entry points are to engage in that process uh, and not just wait until the very end when the, the negotiations are essentially final and um, it's just, you're, you're just reading the call for action at the end. Uh, the, the point of this whole new agenda is to, to be engaged and for people to participate. And so the more, um, more information you have about what the planning process is, where the entry points are, uh, the, the more engaged we hope that uh, the audience will be. Um, so, so I'm going to end there. I welcome any questions that you have. Um, and please, uh, if you don't have questions now, please be sure to send them to, to us. We have, uh, there's a contact page on the site. Um, but we really welcome, welcome your input, your questions, um, and really hope that you'll be able to use this site. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, 
And we have a question already. I, I would just say, um, uh, please do type in your questions or comments um, in the box. Um, and we're, we're actually, we're, we're, we're 25 people. Like we're, it, contrary to what I said before, feel free to unmute yourself as well if you'd like to make a comment uh, or ask a question. Um, it'd be nice to hear uh, some, some voices uh, from, from people who are, are uh, have joined us today. Um, Lynn, there's a question here from Ab Abdul, if you'd like to uh, take that. Um, I had one myself, just to, to, to add to the list. Um, just curious if you could speak a little bit more to the, uh, where the content is coming from, the reference to the thematic experts. Um, it'd be interesting to know that the kind of team behind uh, this site. And, and, and where you're drawing the, the, the news and analysis from. Um, and related to that, where, where people can contribute. Um, I noticed a commentary section, um, how can people contribute their own, um, uh, their own content to, to the website? Well, thank you. Uh, yes, so the information that we have in the site comes from uh, our thematic experts' uh, own research uh, and contacts within various organizations in the field uh, and uh, uh, some of the information is is supplied to us uh, by different organizations who know about what we have what what information we carry um, we uh, all of our information is based on uh, primary sources so so we don't just take a, a press release or a um, news article from from the the um, regular media and use it in a story. We we do some research to be sure that it um, you know is uh, or just to, to to verify and to to be sure it's an it's an original source um, story. Um, but but we really do um, I think it the site is enhanced when we have input from our readers and uh, people are contacting with us us with uh, I information about their activities um, and um, uh, bringing us information as well. Great, and I think this then takes us to um, the question from uh, Abdul Hamad from uh, the Islamic Relief Worldwide. Um, his question is, uh, to what extent were faith-based organizations and non-faith-based organizations um, engaged, um, I guess, in the development of the site, um, but um, in terms of ongoing contributions as well? Uh, that, that is an interesting question. The, I guess, as Kimo had said, our roots really were in tracking what the UN was doing. Uh, so that we came into what we are doing now uh, with our strength really in understanding the intergovernmental organizational processes related to these issues. So, so we don't have, um, uh, I guess, a specific um, uh, area of, um, we have covered some information by stakeholders, and we certainly keep tabs on what uh, various stakeholders are doing. Um, I wouldn't say that we have a particular focus on any one um, section of, of uh, stakeholders, such as faith-based um, organizations, uh, but, but their activities do um, factor into some of our, our work uh, in information on, on stakeholder groups. Thank you. Um, another question from Bella Lam from the Jane Goodall Institute in, in Canada. Um, again, uh, on, on the question of, of submitting or sharing information, um, what, if you could just speak to the process, what you're looking for, um, who they get in touch with, um, any kind of guidelines that people should be aware of if they want to contribute. Okay. Uh, yeah, so our guest articles, um, we, we want them to, to be focused on, you know, key themes of the agenda, key activities that the, the, um, the author's organization is involved in. Uh, they wouldn't be uh, kind of editorial uh, op-ed type things. Uh, we'd want them to, to focus on key activities, but within that, um, we do want to have um, some, 
some some liveliness and some some flavor for what is going right and what is going wrong with the agenda. Um, the the articles are generally about 700 words. Uh, if you find on the contact page, you'll find um, some the, the address of. Um, I guess Kaylee's going down there. Yeah, so so you can write to to my colleague uh, Faye Leone, um, or write to the the SDGs at ISD org address um, to uh, um, to start the conversation, and we'll um, you know we'll direct it as um, as appropriate, uh, and and. Um, have some, you know, dialogue about what what the plans are, who who would be authorized.